If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the Filthy Capitalist option. It's so already says. 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of the alliance. You don't have to be a part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times, and you get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com, and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon, and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is a community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. The alliances hang out on Discord. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Vin and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and uh, it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 tier and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy our merch. Buy our merch indeed. The challenge shall lead them. To buy our merch. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. DJ, we are in the midst. DJ Ben's birthday stream. Blood ceremony is up next. Our DJ says... It's like villagers. Also... If you're watching us on Twitter and we see that you did a retweet of us, you will be put in a drawing for a free song. We continue. Some more blood ceremony from the Old Ways Remain 2023 album. This is Powers of Darkness. Let's check it out. All right. Powers of Darkness. Should be interesting considering the conversation we just had. Mm -hmm. All right. Powers of let's Darkness blood ceremony with the lyrics on the video. Let's do it, baby.
Okay, so that was obviously influenced by Ghost. That's what I thought too. Right? I like, thought 100%. I'm like, this is a that's, female that's, ghost. That's ghost thing, right? Where you... Uh, sort of dark, but happy, sort of... like It's like the 60s type music, but like you're singing to Satan, so it, it, it doesn't... Uh, you don't really catch what's going on. I was looking for ghosty, but... Yeah, he's looking for ghosty. But I don't know where you went. He's on vacation, I guess. No, there he is. This sounds like something witches would listen to. Yeah, there goes ghosty. Yeah, yeah. So cute. Th this was this was uh, this was ghost, man. Like that. That was. Oh my gosh! You know what's so cute? Our kids were like messing around on Etsy, I guess, looking for different things, and they came across these. Oh yeah. yeah. And they were like, "Hey, doesn't that kind of look like that that thing you guys have in your?" You know, when you guys stream, I said, oh, yeah, that's him. That's them. It's that's like them. I can't remember the Dark Lord Emporium. I'm not I can't remember what the name of the, the crew is, but he makes some really cool little good characters. All right, and guys, it, here we go. Powers. We're talking about the powers of darkness arising. Yeah, those. Oh, OK. All right. What? Well, sometimes I like overthink stuff, probably. And I assume that the people that are in the music video are the actual vocalists. And so they just seem so young. But now I see that no, the band members are not. That that's that, that's not the children that were in the videos. All right. When the light begins to pale, see the dance of the threshers fail. We've all had a lovely time lately. Lately. Is this it? Yeah. I I don't understand what they're saying. The the, the dance of the threshers flail. What is the dance of the mm -hmm. thresher? Is that like? I mean, I like thought of a threshing farm floor. farm stuff. Yeah, that's when they beat the seeds yeah the... this has got to be about like the black plague period right ghost is a band that that like this is what they do like it's it sounds like the 60s like 60s love songs but the entire time he's talking to shaitan right so that's really steve during the song i could see my 72 year old mother dancing, dancing when, when i was, I was a small a child. child that's cute <laughs> that's really cute <laughs> okay um we may we, we we sure had a lovely time lately so when the dance of the threshers flail, so I think what's happening there is probably there's some sort of famine that's happening. Oh, oh, right, yeah. You know, because maybe maybe it's it's the way of saying that the harvest was not very good this year. Okay. It comes in waves. It comes inside. It ebbs and flows is like a lunar tide. Now the sky is falling. Something from the void is calling, whispering a promise of strange delights. This is what I mean. Watch those voices. <laughs> Powers of darkness, rise! Let the night come alive. Powers of darkness, raise your hands to the mother of sighs. Hmm. Both ghost and blood ceremony formed in 2006. So Neil is saying oh. they came up like almost literally at the same time. So they That's both had the weird. same idea at the same time, I think is Neil's point. That's wild. Okay. I think. But I mean, I definitely thought that immediately when we started it, I was like... Excuse me. Whispering to the mother of size. That's really an interesting. I, I've never heard of the mother of size. I don't know if that's a real character or if Raise it's. Raise your hands to the mother of size. I, I don't know. Like, but that that's a really interesting. Can I just Google it? Uh, term. I know. Mother of that. size. That's a really really interesting term. Um, Mater Saporium, or the mother of size, is one of the three ancient witches or mothers in the Dario Argentine's Three Mothers trilogy. The other two are... Um, Mater Lacrimum, or the Mother of Tears, and Mater Tenerabrium, or the Mother of Darkness. The three witches have powerful magic okay. that allows them to manipulate world events. So the Mother of Sighs, Tears, and Darkness. So okay. there's three sisters, they're witches, okay. and one of them is called the Mother of Sighs, and there's two other mothers. So this is probably a concept record. We'd probably... If you listen to this record all the way through, you'd probably run into the other two mothers as well. They can manipulate world events, kill anyone who discovers their whereabouts, and rule the world. Okay, wow. Raise your hands to the mother of size, okay? And then he talks about Persephone. Persephone was the girl that was uh, Isn't kept... That a flower? She was kept underground by uh, Hades, right? She had to The live, flower queen. Oh, she, had to live, she had to live underground... Okay. With Hades, and then the the flowers would come up. as basically poor Persephone. She's down there with oh, Hades. Oh yeah, that's right. Right, I forgot about and, that. And then she was with the Merovingian in the Matrix, in the Matrix Part Two. Mm -hmm. She was also the the Merovingian's girlfriend. 
and he was down in Hades basically, and she was his girlfriend in Hades. Remember they had that cl- club scene when he had to go. I remember the club scene. When they went down into the club or whatever. But I, you, that, I only remember Trinity and what's his face. Remember there was a girl that he kissed. She said she wouldn't give it to him unless she, she yeah, and yeah, he yeah. kissed her, yeah. and then it was like this big whole thing. Yeah, so she, her name was Persephone. So they had to go down into the nightclub, which is basically going down into, into Hades, yeah. right? And then, oh, when you find this girl's Persephone, blah. So I love your mind. The Matrix. Does it? Do you think everybody got that from? No, not everybody's putting that together. It was just a club scene, right? In part of the story, or do you think everybody oh, was yeah, like, oh, the underworld, Persephone? Her name is Persephone. He's in the underworld. I mean, it seemed pretty <laughs> pretty obvious too. <laughs> All right. She's a daughter of Demeter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so Winters thaw her coming's just the thing. Well, she hasn't been on time lately. Okay, so they're kind of stuck in a freeze. Well, remember, these people, it looks like they're in an agrarian culture, and if in an agrarian culture, you're held hostage by the weather. So if you look up, remember in verse Guys. one, verse one was talking about how the, the threshers dancers flailed. Mm-hmm. And then we were speculating okay. Failed. Yeah, yeah. It fail. well, it you guys, flail. Maine. It says flail, not flail. Literally, we just had a big, giant winter storm. It is April, bro. April. Anyway, I'm just glad that we're not, you know, <laughs> we can still go to the grocery store and buy our vegetables. We don't have to wait for the for the winter, winter to thaw. Yeah, I mean, so it looks like it's a it's a song. It's it's a song there. The end is drawing ever nigh without light. Life's easy on the eyes. <laughs> without like light, that. life's not easy on the eyes. Take I like your that leave. Line. Find us where the shadows meet and what awaits us on the other side. Uh, I think that this is probably like some sort of horrible famine. And this is how we're going to deal with it. We're just going to sing until everybody dies. Is what it looks but like. it says with this is this is what always confuses me because it always kind of seems like there's a contradiction. Maybe I'm looking at it wrong. The end is ever drawing nigh without light. Life's not easy on the eyes. So it seems like you need to have some light to make life easier. Find us where the shadows meet. Who waits on the other side? Powers of darkness, end of times, endless night, power of darkness rise. You just said we need the light to make life good. And now you're saying powers of darkness rise? Raise yeah. your hands to the mother of size. I don't think so. I don't think I want to raise my hands to her. I don't think that she sounds like a very nice lady. <laughs> yeah, but the, these are like her foot soldiers and stuff. Shout out to uh, Jalili, Sarush Jalili. Long live the UK. <laughs> um, What the night come along? Yeah, I mean... For, for me, sonically, like, I did kind of get that, like, ghost vibe to it, for sure. Like, a female ghost vibe. Um, I actually like, you know, for the most part, I've liked a lot of the ghost songs. I guess there was something about this one. Maybe it was the style of the vocals or well, the slowness. I'm not really sure. Some it, of these... It says, Persephone the Fire Queen for Winter's Thaw, her coming's just the thing. Well, she hasn't been on time lately, lately. She hasn't been on time lately. I think per, the Persephone's flowers are supposed to indicate that spring is on the way. Spring is here. Winter's right? gone. So winter's holding its that grip. That goes it seems with like. verse one. Yeah. The the wheat harvesters. So this looks like an extended winter, basically, mm-hmm. and that's what created the famine. And now we're all talking about you know dying. Yeah. Which, I mean. That's one of the things about ghosts. They did something about the, uh, I think it was the Black Plague or the Bubonic Plague mm-hmm. or whatever. And I'll, I remember thinking to myself, like, this is really nefarious to have these wonderful, you know, little melodies. But you're talking about hailing Satan and all this and that. But then it was like, yeah, what did you think Ring Around the Rosy was, man? Like, when you're in a situation with a giant epidemic like the Black Plague, like the Bubonic Plague, or... You know what those poor Ukrainians have to do? The Holodomor, I don't I don't think I'm saying it correctly, where the basically the Russians guaranteed the starvation of these people and so these people watch like thousands and thousands of their kids just die in, you know, the worst way possible. Um the, those Ukrainians. So, you know, there's just it, it's just when you see all this stuff and you see how like those people would have had to come up with some sort of way to lessen the blow 
and I could see, I could see realistically a bunch of ironic songs, songs that are talking about death or whatever, being sung to children, because it's kind of like, all right, we got to get ourselves in the mindset here. Yeah. We're probably going to lose one of these kids. Yep. One of these kids is probably going to lose us. So we're going to start doing yeah. this right now. Life is just a dream. Here we go. Because there's no in a house of like eight, nine people, one of us is going to die early. Right? Like that would have been the mindset. And so it's interesting like when people see like how spooky the, you know, ring around the rosy and all the rest of it yeah. is. And, 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 and it's like that's a children's song. Well, but what are they saying? They're talking about the death. Ashes, ashes, we, we all, all fall, fall down. down. Pocket full of posies because like, that covered the stench. Yeah, like... It's, it's, it is interesting because that group of people could look at us and think we're the creepy ones because essentially we take whatever is wrong and we just do this. Right. Right. So it, at least they were kind of facing it. Yeah, the, they were facing it directly. And that, that's what I'm saying. We, we talked about this earlier. It's like, back in the day... I agree, it was not communicated in the best way, but like walk it off type of thing. But back in the day, like, it was just assumed, like, if you had a problem or an issue or something, like, facing it head on was the was the way to deal with it. Now, it's, if you have a problem, it's society's responsibility to make else, you yeah. feel good so that yep. you can recover. Mm -hmm. But back then, it wasn't, I mean, back then, people were like, listen, uh somebody in this household is going to die. And so I could see, all right, we're going to sing this to kids, you know, and we're going to have the kids talk about death and things like that and do it in a nice little circle. And because it's better to, to look death in the face and sing about it than to be terrified about it and act like it's not going to happen to you. Yeah. And sometimes knowing like, some people are more, like, systematically minded. Like, if you know what is going to happen, then it's a little bit easier as the process takes its course. So if the song shows you, okay, you have an understanding that if somebody gets um, a ring around a red dot on their skin, that's a sign that it's they have it. Right. Po ring around the rosies, pocket full of posies, then ashes, ashes, we all fall down. So that, I, I from what I understand, the ashes, ashes that they had to burn the bodies because the plague, they had to eliminate the plague. It was so, a song about the bubonic plague, Jet. And you, it's ring around the rosy, pocket full of posies, ashes, ashes, we, we all, all fall down. down. I don't know if she even played that as a kid. Oh, right. And then all us kids would fall onto she, the ground. She, she's like, yeah. let's ring around the rosy. So everybody holds hands and then you kind of go in a ring circle. Ring around the rosy, pocket jump. full of posies, ashes, ashes, we all fall down. And, and you, then we'd all collapse onto the ground. we dropped drop down. Um, so those, but we were singing these songs on the regular as kids. It was just fun. Had no idea what the song meant. And then eventually you get to a point where like, you know, like where your friends start showing you stuff. They're like, hey, well, what about this? What about that? Well, they started showing you like, hey, this is what this song is about. Like we're singing this like right. whatever. Right. Um, but maybe what I was thinking is maybe like if you saw the marks showing up on your family members, now you know if a pocket full of posies is next and then ashes, ashes is coming. So there is coming a day where we're going to burn that person. So it kind of like preps your mind for what's going to be coming. I don't know if that's why they were. I have no idea. It's kind of. The psychology makes absolute sense. I mean, if you ever look at the original sense. Disney stories, like they're dark as fuck. Like, like for instance, the, the Grimm's Brothers tales. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like those stories, the, they're not like, you know, like Cinderella with, you know, the stepsister trying to shove their feet into the shoes. Like in the original, they friggin' cut their toes off and their blood is dripping out of the shoes so they can fit their foot in there. Like, they're like, we're, we're, it was the dark ages. Oh, I, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold on that one, but boy, didn't I have something to say. You're making it difficult, Joe. You're making it real difficult. Neil, I don't remember Red Riding Hood, but I'm sure it, I'm sure. What it's do you mean? Gruesome. You didn't remember Little Red Riding Hood? Well, yeah, but I'm sure that there's a more gruesome version I, of that. One. What, Probably I'm she gonna, gets gobbled I'm up. Gonna, I'm gonna do a I'm gonna do a, a little segment called Nursery Rhymes for Millennials. <laughs> I'm gonna read you guys all these nursery stories. We're gonna uh, explain it to you. That uh, that that you guys, it's so crazy to me to watch Jet like what. What is ringing around the road? You know what I was thinking? What do you guys think? Like, let me just, like, jump in here and all of this, like, 
seriousness. What do you guys think about if one of the nights during the week, if we did a stream that was like the best of humanity or something, and I put a post up on Patreon and you can drop links in that post of videos, short ones, you know, like we're talking like a minute or whatever, like a minute or less of just like human beings, like being good, like doing stuff that's like encouraging and stuff that kind of like feel good shit. <laughs> And then we just kind of react to that for a little bit on a certain night so we get some positivity into our lives. Let me know what you guys think about that. You can let us know in the chat here. Um, I, I look at the, uh, the, the nursery rhymes as a very positive thing. Because it's like, you have to face it. You know what that is. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I, I see what you're saying. I just... You know. What? I'm distracted. I mean, obviously. But yeah, no, I, I see I see what you're saying about the nursery rhyme thing. I'm just, like, I, I just had that. Well, yeah, no, I, I, I would love to, to react to some uh, positive vibes as well. Seriously. Yeah, ass. like that, those, the video I showed you last night where people were just, like, helping each other. Yeah. Like, it, I just felt, like, happier. Like, I'm like, oh, okay, it's... You know. Yeah, I'm with it. I'm with it. What it but it would be cool because we don't know what it's going to be and we get to do an authentic reaction. What What would you give this song? I mean, I didn't really like it. Um, You know, it was just, you know, I didn't really like it. See, part of the reason that I like Ghost is because musically, I like what they do in the background with the music. So, um, I, I don't know. I just, this is a probably, a, I'll give this one a 6.8. Um... Okay, you guys, be looking out for that post on Patreon for you to add the links to. I haven't heard a ghost song in a long time. So, I, I, it, it seems to me that they've created a little bit of a subgenre. Let's see if there's two or three other bands that come out with this kind of style. Um, I, I like those contradictory ideas, though. The, like... Because when people talk about, like, the traditional life and things like that, they're not really talking about tradition. They're talking about a specific snapshot in Americana between the 50s and, like, the first two years of the 60s. Like, the little snapshot of the, the, the you know, car and the fence and the, the, the pet and the two kids mm -hmm. and the white lady and she's in an apron and she's got that you know whatever that hairstyle <laughs> is and the guy comes home at 5 30 you know and and goes and, into the den so that's a specific post-world war ii kind of existence that little snapshot of time is what these people are talking about as quote traditional right like so like it's like one it's pretty recent <laughs> It's pretty approximate. Like there's still people yeah. alive from that time period, and two, it's like, it's a it, it only lasted for about eleven years. Like that kind you know, of America was only around for like a like literally a decade. Do you think that had anything to do with them returning from the war? Like because the, the systematic nature yeah, of the, the army, that, the military that's, that that was the entire point, and the was, women trying to create an environment that you know the clean the. You know what I mean? Well, that's what I'm saying. Well, the thing that happened Stretch was, those was the, the tight. dudes dudes came dudes Bounce came back home. They wanted their jobs back. The girls had to go back and work, and then the girls were like, you know what? Right, Steve. Leave it to Beaver. They did it for about ten years, and they're like, you know what? Nah. <laughs> <That's> murder <laughs> brawls. Nah. <laughs> oh man. Maybe the, women, so the women were like, nah, yeah. <laughs> we're going to work. And of course, of course, all the mostly white male CEOs was like, that's right, girl. Fight for your, don't let the men tell you what to do. Yep. Come work for me. Yep. And let me tell you what to do. <laughs> no, you don't want no man to tell you what to do. Come over here to my, <laughs> come here where the CEO will tell you what to do. He'll tell you what to wear. He'll tell you when to go to bed, all that stuff. And you're going to ask go him to use the bathroom. And you are going to obey that man because you're a feminist. All right. Uh, nine. It's your choice, though. It's your choice. <laughs> nine dot four. 6.8. Oh, my gosh. All right. Well, if there are still eight people left in this, in this uh, little thing of a jig, that would be great. I'm seeing a 57 count here, but I'm only seeing like 11 likes. So if we don't do something about that by the time the commercial's coming, Poor I don't know Benji's what to do. Benji's birthday is going to get shortened. Been out. Sorry, out. 